I'd like to clear up some misconceptions about starter ratings. They're not actually part of the Fargo rate system, as you'll see. They're ignored once a player has an established Fargo rating, so there's no lingering effect if they're initially set too high or too low. And if you don't have reason to believe a starter rating value you see for someone is meaningful, assume it's not. It may be nonsense. Still, the concept is potentially useful. We say a play player has a Fargo rating, also known as a, an established Fargo rating, when a player has performance in our system based upon 200 or more games. So, everyone else on the planet, that means everybody who doesn't have a Fargo rating, falls in one of two categories. Either they have no games in our system, or they have some but fewer than 200 games in our system. Starter ratings are potentially convenient in transitioning those players to becoming players who have Fargo ratings, or for including them in events or competitions that are couched in the language of Fargo ratings. Fargo rate doesn't need starter ratings at all. Forget about them. Let's first understand the system without them, so here we are at the start of a day. We've just erased all rating information. So we're starting with a big list of players with 13 million games between them. We've got no ratings and no assumptions about the players. As we start to go through this list, we see a guy named Shane Van Boning lost to a fellow named David Alcade, but we don't know what that means because we don't yet now know how David plays. And then we see that David lost to another guy named Tyler Steyer. So we're starting to think maybe Shane Van Boning is a lower than average player because he lost to somebody who lost to somebody else. But then as we look further, that assessment starts to get turned around. This is a big process that happens on dozens of computers operating in the cloud. The result of this process, paying more attention to recent games, less attention to older games, but paying attention to all of the games, is a series of performance ratings. Now, are these performance ratings reliable? Well, it depends. They're reliable to differing degrees, depending on how much data uh, goes into generating them. Those based upon more games are more reliable. 200 games is where they're minimally reliable that we're willing to call them Fargo ratings. But there's plenty of performance ratings that come out of this process that are based upon fewer than 200 games, and they still have useful information. So let's see how we actually use this information, actual performance ratings for players with fewer than 200 games, in conjunction with a, a new concept that we call starter ratings, to get something useful. So here's the idea. Imagine we assign a guess performance level, it's going to be a starter rating, that's given an initial weight of 200 games. And this orange rectangle represents 200 games. It represents 200 virtual games, games that are not real. So if this was a new player who hadn't played any real games, they would just play by this starter rating. Now, when that player starts playing real games, those real games start replacing those virtual games within this block of 200. And they start replacing them at the real performance level. The new real games keep replacing the virtual games, and the performance rating the player sees is just a weighted blend of the real performance level and the guess performance level. Here, at 100 games, is just an average of the two. And here the starter rating is playing a diminished role once the player has 200 games and the rectangle is filled in with blue, the player has an established Fargo rating and the starter rating is ignored. Now, what about players who don't have a starter rating set? Those players still have a performance rating that comes out of the optimization. But when that performance rating is based upon only a few games, it can be pretty volatile. Let's take, for example, suppose you're a league player who's played only two weeks of league and you've played 10 games and you're in a league for which your opponents are rated about 400. If you've won five of those 10 games, your performance rating will be about 400. But if you happen to have won nine out of those 10 games, your performance rating will be over 700. And if you happen to have won only one out of those 10 games, your performance rating would be under 100. These are just statistical swings those performance ratings are not yet a good measure of what your long-term average is going to be, and a starter rating just tempers things down to reality in the early going. Let's take a look at some player entries in the Fargo Rate mobile app in light of what I've been talking about. Of the four players here, the only one with an established Fargo rating is Nick from Quebec with a rating of 592. 
you can see Nick has 3,400 games in the system, also known as ro robustness of 3,400. Did Nick ever have a starter rating set? We basically don't know and don't care. It doesn't make any difference. Sebastian, also from Quebec, does not have an established Fargo rating, and we can see explicitly that Sebastian does not have a starter rating set. And because Sebastian doesn't have a starter rating set, that preliminary rating of 577 is actually a performance rating that comes from the Fargo rate optimization based upon 104 games. That's probably Sebastian's level of play within 30 points or so, but maybe not. If we move up to Nathan from Minnesota, you can see Nathan has no games in the Fargo rate system, so Fargo rate has nothing to say about how Nathan plays. Nathan has a starter rating uh, assigned a 525, so his preliminary rating is based upon uh, only upon that. If you happen to know where that 525 comes from, you may know it has some, some meaning to you. If you don't know where it comes from, you should assume it has no meaning. Nathan may be a very top amateur or may be a beginner player. Lastly, we have Alexander from Washington State. This one's a little bit trickier. Alexander doesn't have a Fargo rating, but he does have 108 games in the system with a starter rating of 350. What that means is that Alexander's preliminary rating, the one that you see, 316, is actually a weighted blend of the starter rating of 350, weighted by 92 virtual games, and his performance rating of we don't know what based upon 108 games. Well, that performance rating must be about 280 or so to get that preliminary rating of 316. Starter ratings are really a way to incorporate local knowledge to the extent that it's useful before the data has a chance to really take over. Uh, league operators often have a lot of knowledge about how players play. Uh, in the, the least cases, they can often just put players into three categories. They know who are the absolute beginners, who are the middle-of-the-road players, and who are the more experienced, better players. In the better cases, there are fairly well-established rating approaches where people are a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or they're a D plus, B minus, uh, you know, et, et cetera. And those can all be uh, converted approximately to a, a Fargo rate type number, and those can be used as, as starter ratings. And we can often work with groups to find a reasonable mapping between local subjective ratings and a Fargo rate starter rating. For instance, these are performance ratings, um, many of which are, are for unestablished players, for players that, a list of players that play in the uh, Gale and Tony Robles' Predator Pro-Am Tour in New York City. Uh, we just uh, put this together this week. Uh, and individually, this group of players we do not have rated very well at all. In fact, it's really pretty poor. Uh, none of these tournaments have been going in, but many of these players have gotten some games in from, let's say, Super Billiards Expo or a weekly tournament at Amsterdam or at Skyline in Brooklyn or uh, or New England Nine Ball Series or someplace else. And when we put it together collectively, we can get a pretty good idea of where the different subjective rating categories belong. So if you were to say that that a C plus is associated with a 500 Fargo rating or an A is associated with a 600 Fargo rating, that's uh, that works pretty well. And if you were to use those to assign starter ratings to everybody who is a C in the Predator Pro-Am Tour and everybody who is an A in the Predator Pro-Am Tour, you get a re reasonably good starting point. The key to take it, taking advantage of the things that are based upon Fargo ratings, like for example Fargo rate handicapping and leagues and tournaments and the like, is that everybody play by something that at least looks like a Fargo rating. So for many players, that's an actual Fargo rating. Uh, for some players, it's just a guess of a Fargo rating. And for a third group of players, it's a blend of that guess of a Fargo rating and an emerging Fargo rating. So in summary, starter ratings are not really part of Fargo rate. They're more an aftermarket thing, but they can be a useful way to incorporate local knowledge in your leagues or tournaments.